Far out, mate. Google Shopping campaigns are so hard to set up. Arr! Relax, guys. I'm going to walk you through the process of your Google Shopping campaigns really easily, step by step, in this video. Let's go. Hey guys, Sam here from keycommerce.com and today I'm going to show you how to set up your Google Shopping campaigns all in one video from scratch. This video has everything you need to set up your Google Shopping campaigns. Now, I've generated millions of dollars in sales from shopping campaigns. I'm not trying to boast, I'm just being honest and I've done this for a long time and I've set up many different campaigns in shopping and generate a lot of revenue. And honestly, if you can get your Google Shopping campaign set up properly, you can scale your store much more easily. I run an e-commerce marketing agency and we set up shopping campaigns for all our clients. We also have our own e-commerce store that we use with shopping campaigns too. And generally shopping campaigns perform way better than search campaigns. So I'm going to be dropping some agency level knowledge in this video, so pay close attention. In this video, we'll be using the Google Sheets method to build your product feed for your shopping ads. I've made videos on two other methods you can use to set up your shopping feed. I'll leave a link to them in the description, but really you can use any of these methods. Anyway, so what are shopping ads? They're those ads that show up on Google when someone searches and they're different from regular search campaigns. They're amazing for e-commerce stores because they show the image of the product as well as the price. Like I said, these perform so much better than search campaigns in pretty much all our clients' accounts. Let's get into my computer right now and start setting up our Merchant Center account. Okay guys, let's create our Google Merchant Center account. Let's go to Google, type in Google Merchant Center. Click on the first result for Merchant Center. And we're gonna click Get Started. It's gonna ask us to enter in our business information. Make sure that you're using the same email that's gonna be used on your Google Analytics account and your Google Ads account. If they're all the same email, it's gonna be so much easier because Google's gonna automatically see that you own all these accounts and it's easy to link them all up. Select your country, your business display name. This is gonna be what your business looks like in Merchant Center for yourself. And your time zone, really important for reporting. So mine's key surface and I'm gonna do West Coast. And you have to agree to the Merchant, uh, the Merchant Center Terms and Conditions. Click Continue. Great, so this is gonna choose what programs we're gonna sign up for on Merchant Center. We're gonna choose Surfaces Across Google and Shopping Ads. Now, Surfaces Across Google, this is the free organic listings on Google. By setting up the Merchant Center account the way we're gonna set up, we get to access these listings. But we're also gonna do the shopping ads, the paid ads, that's what we're here for. So once we click that, we click Create Account, so now we've started creating our account. So now we're gonna go through and set up first the surfaces across Google. All the stuff we set up here is basically gonna affect shopping anyway, so we're gonna set this up together. So we're gonna go through, and before we do our products, let's do uh, the other parts. So first let's go uh, get our website linked up to Merchant Center. So click that bottom one, and then website URL. This is your website URL, so go get your Shopify URL, uh, your actual final URL that the customer sees. Mine's keysurface.com, click save. You then have to claim this URL. So we have to verify and claim. Now I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do this, which is the bottom right hand corner, I have access to my server. And I'm gonna take you through this step by step. So click, I have access to my server. Now, all we have to do here is just add this little bit of HTML to our homepage, super easy. I'm gonna take you through it step by step. So all we have to do is copy that, click that button, it's gonna copy it to clipboard and we're gonna open up our Shopify dashboard. So here I'm on the Shopify dashboard. On the left-hand side, I'm going to go down to online store. I'm gonna to go to themes, and then I'm gonna go click actions and then edit code. Now we're gonna to go to theme liquid. Make sure you're in theme.liquid, really important guys. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down until we see the, the slash head. It's gotta be slash head, it can't be head by itself slash head and you can easily find this by just searching in the search box for exactly this so just copy exactly what i search here it's going to find that exact code there's only one of them in the whole page and we're going to paste that code right above this it's super simple guys that's all you have to do right above that slash head and there's my code and you see it's always right before the body class there is another head element up the top because there's an open and there's a close that's the open right there but down the bottom we want to put it right before the closing one click save all right guys, let's now verify that we've actually installed it properly. So click the little eye icon, open up your homepage, 
And then all you have to do is right click and select view page source. Now this is the code of the website and we'll be able to find the tag here if you actually saved that code before. So all you have to do is just search for that open brackets, I don't know what you call it, and then head, and then you'll see it there. And then right above that, you'll see our Google site verification tag is right there, exactly what we pasted. So no boom, it's there on the website. And now we just have to go back to Merchant Center and get it verified. All right guys, so now we're back in Merchant Center and we just have to click verify URL. Boom, we're now verified. All we have to do now is click claim URL in the bottom right hand corner. Mine's gonna say, it's gonna have a yellow box saying that I need to reclaim it, that's fine. You might have that as well if you've already tried setting this up before. That's totally fine guys, but click claim URL in the bottom right hand corner. Right there, one other Merchant Center account exists with this website. That's because I tried setting up before. Click claim URL, it's gonna override that one. And now it's green. Both are green, awesome, fantastic. It's gonna refresh. Beautiful, that looks fantastic. Let's go back to the Merchant Center account and let's keep setting up the rest of our account. So next we have to set up the settings. So go to set up shipping. Awesome guys, so for the shipping settings, I've got a whole video on shipping settings, but I'm gonna go through it here with you anyway. What you need to do here is basically create your shipping settings so it matches what's on your website. So I'm gonna set flat rate shipping, United States, US dollars, order cutoff time. This is when does someone need to order by to get delivered, start delivering the next day. So 3 p.m. So I'm gonna put 3 p.m. here and West Coast. Handling time, the next one here, this is how long it takes in the warehouse before you actually ship it out. So sometimes that can take a few days depending on the product, the warehouse. Transit time, this is how long it takes once it leaves the warehouse to get to the customer. And this is gonna depend on your store, your products. I'm gonna put this in as an example. Great, advanced settings, that's minimum order value. Not gonna put that in for now, I'm just gonna keep it really simple. But you can set a minimum order value that someone needs to get this shipping rate. Next one here, holiday cutoff. Uh, so that's, you know, if you've got a big, you know, Black Friday uh, or Christmas, something like that, then you can actually put ones in for those big dates. So that someone has to, you know, order by this date to get it by the holiday. And then here you actually add in the shipping rates. So this is gonna be for all products. I'm gonna call it fixed rate, something like that. Flat rate's good. And then gonna create a single rate for all orders. This is because for this store, it's $5 shipping on all orders. Super easy. You're gonna add in what works for you there, but for my store, this is what works for me. Uh, just make it match your shipping settings. Click save, awesome, there it is. Back to surface across Google. And now we can go through the tax. Click set up tax. Now here, if you're in the US, you can get Google to set up your taxes automatically, it's awesome. So set up taxes in the States where you charge sales tax, recommended. Click that, click save. Now if you just click plus and you just select where you're located, it's gonna have this first one here where it says use Google to determine rates. So Google's gonna determine how much to display for the tax rate depending on where that person is actually located. So you can just click save and that's done. That's really easy. Wherever you are in the world, you know, you're gonna have to set up for yourself. But once you've set that up, boom, it's done. Cool. And now we're gonna set up our products. All right, guys, let's create our Google Sheets feed in Merchant Center. So we're in Merchant Center, go to products, and then we're in the feed section. And then we just click the big plus sign to create this feed. Now we're in country of sale, United States, just put your country in here as well. Language is gonna be English. Okay, destinations, shopping ads, and surfaces across Google. Click continue. Okay, feed name. It's gonna be like Google Sheets feed is fine. And make sure you select the first one, which is Google Sheets. Click continue. It's gonna pop up and get access to your email because it's in Google Sheets. Click allow. Now, it's gonna ask you how you're gonna create this, this Google Sheet. So use, use the first one. So it's gonna generate a new Google Sheet from template. Click create feed. It's gonna open up uh, that window again. Click allow. Once it does that, it's gonna show you here, there's the Google Sheets feed. So we just gotta click it to open it. And it's gonna open the Google Sheet in another window, awesome. Now go back to your Shopify dashboard, go to your product tab on the left-hand side, you're in all products, and then click export. It's gonna pop up, make sure you select all products, plain CSV file, export products. It then gets sent to your email. Open up the email and click the link to download those products. Now you can open up this in Excel or you can even drag this into Google Sheets uh, and then open it as a Google Sheet. Uh, but the main thing here is you're gonna create a new tab in that Google Sheets doc and then we're gonna paste in that product data straight into this sheet. This gives us a record of what the products are on the website already and now we're going to start configuring them and optimizing them for the feed. So all we have to do is open up that CSV file, copy the products there, go over to our Google Sheet and paste, I select right click and then select paste values only. So there we have 
uh, the products from our Shopify store exported into this Google Sheet. So now we can start optimizing them. So let's go back to that first tab. Now let's make some room, select a couple of rows and insert some rows above. So here we can paste in those products and then we're gonna match them to the right fields. Okay, so let's just select these, copy them. So they're also over here and paste them underneath. Leave a bit of room so we can start moving some stuff around. So you see here, we now have the Shopify products below and above we actually have the Google Shopping fields that we need to add in. See there, all those Google Shopping fields. We need to match these bottom ones to the top ones. So we have all these ones here. We're gonna match those up guys. So that's a slow process one by one and we're gonna do it together. First, we can just grab all the titles and put them straight up into title. That's really, really easy. The next thing we can do is grab the body HTML and put that into description. Sweet, now that that's in there, that's awesome. Now, you'll see that in this actual description, there's HTML, there's HTML right there. And so even though Google says that they clean it, I like to clean it for them just so I know it's 100% fixed. So what I'll use is a tool like this, HTML Cleaner. I'll put a link in the description to this, this website, it's super easy. You just put in your HTML, just paste it in, and then it cleans it out. So it pulls out all that HTML. You may have to clean up a few little characters here or there like that right there, but overall, you can just copy and paste this straight into that sheet for that column there. So copy and paste that and put it straight in. You can do that for all of your descriptions. I'm not gonna do it for all of them right here, but uh, there it is, that's how you clean it, and that's how you have the title and the description. The next thing here is gonna be the ID. So this is, we're just gonna use the handle here. This doesn't matter too much. Google just uses this to show you when you do your bidding, which product is which. If you just keep it as a number or a random skew, it's gonna be harder to see what is, what is what. But if you actually put the handle in there, which is you know the final URL, the handle, it makes it really easy for you to do your, your, auto, uh, your manual bidding because you know what product is that. The next field is gonna be the condition and that's gonna be new for all your products. Most likely uh, it's gonna be new. So go through and put in new for every single one there. Okay, now we're gonna go over and we're gonna grab the variant price and the variant compare price. So we're gonna copy these and paste them over here. Actually, let's move them a bit over, so copy them. And let's just move them a bit over here, awesome. Now, we need to add these all in as the price. And this is fine when it's the regular price, but what about when there's a sale price? Let me give you an example. This page here has the, the total price, but then it has the sale price, $800, so it's $100 off. So it means we need to reflect this in the feed. So we're gonna create a new column called sale underscore price. And we wanna put the old price, $900 in the price, and then the actual new price, $800 in the sale price column. And then you can delete the old pricing. Hey guys, I'm just actually editing this bit of footage right now and I found that I actually made a bit of a mistake in this feed setup, where I actually make a mistake with the pricing in the feed. I don't put in the currency, which is necessary to get this approved and Merchant Center is gonna disapprove me. And this can happen to anybody. I've been doing this for years and I'm not immune. But what happens next is that you actually see how I solve this and it's through this troubleshooting process by working with Merchant Center. Merchant Center is gonna tell me there's an error here in the feed. You're gonna find that out in a few minutes. And then I go back in, look at the product specifications page and I find out how to fix it. We make the fix and then the feed is approved and live. And this is a process that you're going to have to do for your own feed because I can't give you a list of every single problem that you're gonna run into because every single feed is different, every store is different and Google also changes all the time. But you need to know how to think like a marketer here and solve this problem almost like an engineer. Now, my team and I, we actually have a service where we fix Merchant Center feeds for you if you wanna contact us and we can help you with that. Anyway, get back to the, the feed and then watch and you're gonna see exactly what I do. Okay guys, so now we're gonna do the link. So this is the final page where the customers actually end up. So we're gonna open up all the product pages from Shopify, we could do it really easily, open up all the product pages for each of the products, and then we're just gonna copy and paste the URL into that sheet. Okay, now that we've added in all the product page links, we can then go over to availability and add in in stock. It's gonna be in stock for all of them. You can add that in, copy and paste, put it for all of those. The next one is gonna be the actual image source, the image link. So we're gonna scroll over and find the image source. It's actually in the feed already. And just copy and paste all of those straight into the actual image link. I like to go in and change this query at the end, so remove that little bit, the question mark, just because I like to keep the feed really clean. I don't like anything else in there. And that's just the link to the actual product image, so I like to take that off. The next thing is the GTIN, MPN, and the brand. We can actually remove the GTIN. You can use it. There are identification numbers for all the products, generally, if you've got a supplier, but it's much easier to just use the MPN. So I removed that column, and now uh, for the brand, you can actually use the brand of the product if that exists. I do recommend that, but if it's your own product or you're white labeling it, then use your own brand. So I'm gonna put in key surfers for my one, and copy and paste that for all the products. 
The next one we're gonna look at is the Google product category. This is standardized and I do have a big list of all the different categories and their numbers. So I'm gonna link that in the description. Here it is. So you're gonna to have to go through and search with a few search terms and find what category best suits your product. And you're gonna to have to do this for each individual product, especially if you've got a general store, especially if those products are different. Uh, mine are all surfboards. So I'm just gonna search for surfboards and find the actual number. So let me do that now. So there we go, there's the number 3320. So I'm just gonna copy that and just go back to the sheet and then paste that in for all the different products there as the Google product category variable. So that's cool, really easy. You're gonna have to do that for your own one, but that's all done there. The next thing guys is I'm just gonna delete all these columns down the bottom just to get them out of the way because we've finished our feed. And guys, I'm just gonna go back and delete the original feed as well. You can keep it if you like, but I like to clean up this whole sheet. So there it is. That's our whole feed. The last thing I love to do as well is go through and optimize the title. So this is really, really important. And you know, I've got a whole video on optimizing the feed too, but go through and telling Google a bit more about the product. So if, they, if Google just looks at your title and says Astro Zombie, Google's gonna be like, what the heck is this? And it's gonna take a lot more time for it to really figure out that you're selling surfboards. So what you can do here is add in that it's a surfboard, the length, the brand, uh, the model, uh, all that kind of stuff. And uh, you know, there's a whole formula that you'll use for your title. And this is a whole art of optimizing titles. You'll also change them over time based on the, the search queries that people use. Um, but I'm just gonna start off here as an example, Astro Zombie Surfboard, six foot and by Rob McNeil. So I'm just gonna put in there the actual, if it's a brand or who actually made it, that sort of thing. You're gonna have to do this for your own products. It is a bit of an art guys, but just don't leave it as just ghost or Astro Zombie. I recommend you know, changing it so it's more optimized and you're gonna go through and do this for each of your products. And guys, one last thing before we actually go to Merchant Center and test out this feed is that I've actually left the MPN field blank. You'll see that there on the right hand of the screen that it's blank. Uh, that's because you know you can still get your feed approved if it's blank, uh, but Google may disapprove you later. So I recommend, you know, I put in something there like your SKU, put in the SKUs for each product there just so that you've got something in there. But for now, when I did this, I just left it blank, uh, but you can come back and change it later or you can change it now. It's up to you. All right guys, now time to actually test it. So we're gonna go back into Merchant Center, click on the feed, open up the feed, and on the right-hand side, we need to click Fetch Now. Once we click that, it's then going to start fetching the feed. Now this does take a few minutes, and you're going to have to refresh the page maybe a couple of times before it actually comes up. Usually it takes about two to three minutes. Awesome, there we go guys. So now we have the actual errors, and just like I said, so there's the problems with the pricing. So that's the problem, because I, I believe I didn't put in the, the right currency. So yeah, so there's these problems, and these problems are gonna happen to you. You're gonna have, have different problems, and you're gonna have to learn how to solve them, which is by Googling, check out my other videos, uh, that sort of thing. So it is a bit of a process, and it can be really, really frustrating, but I'm gonna jump over right now, and actually go to the price, and put in price Google Shopping, and show you the process. So I pull up the actual page that shows you what you need for pricing, so that Google says we need it to have the currency. So you need to have the price, and then the currency in like three letters like that. So it means I have to have USD. I didn't put it in decimal point either. So I need to put that in as well. And even just scrolling down here, I'm just reading a bit more about what's required. You need to have the right, uh, here's the currencies for each language, each country. So if you're in, you know, Canada, it'll be CAD. If you're in Australia, it'll be AUD, you know, what have you. So you need to make sure you have the right one for wherever you're selling. Now let's go back to the feed. So let me go in and add in this for myself. So, you know, decimal point zero zero and then USD and I'm gonna add this for every single one. And I'm gonna to have to go through and change this all. And I know I just know for next time, uh, if I do the next feed next week and I remember it, I just have to put this in. But there are a lot of little rules like this that you need to remember and you need to learn. Uh, we don't really need to learn it because you can just Google it really. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go fix these all up now. And then all I have to do is just go back and refetch the feed. Really, really simple. So I'm gonna do it for the sale price as well. I'm gonna go back and just refetch the feed. And we're gonna wait a few moments and then, yep, awesome, processing done. It's all approved. That's how you get your, your Merchant Center feed all approved with the Google Sheets method. Now we can go into Google Ads and actually create the Google Shopping campaigns because it's all approved in Merchant Center. Whew, and that's a process you guys are gonna to have to go through and everyone has their own journey with this, uh, but that's how I've done it here and that's the process. Thanks guys, let's get to the next stage. Now, a really good tip for you guys is instead of just creating your account, we can get a free credit from Google of $150 by just searching for Google Ads free credit. So go and do this right now and go click on this result here that has a Google Ads free credit. You're gonna click on that link, you're gonna to go to this page and you're gonna enter in your email for your account. Now make sure you haven't set up your Google Ads account yet and you can enter your email and it's gonna actually send you that uh, link to redeem this credit. So let's do that now. Uh, click, yep, yeah, verify and then I'm gonna select the traffic lights. Awesome. 
fantastic. And it's gonna send us an email. Yeah, I've got to select that. And then uh, send us an email that actually has a link to verify this. All right guys, so I've gone to my email inbox and this is what it looks like. The email, $150, your $150 credit is here. Uh, here's the code here, but you just click redeem now and that's gonna then uh, open up your account and then you can apply it. Now I've already applied it here, uh, so I can't do this again by clicking this because it's just gonna do nothing. Uh, but that's what it looks like for you guys. So make sure you do that to get your account set up. Okay guys, once you accept the, click the redeem link or you open up your new account, you're gonna get this page. Don't select a goal, go down to the bottom and click switch to expert mode. We wanna click that, that's gonna allow us to much more easily breeze through the setup and I'm gonna show you exactly what to do. You're now gonna see this screen, click the button, create an account without a campaign. We don't wanna create an account just yet and now you're gonna confirm your business information, just US, that's all what I need, but switch it to what uh, matches your business uh, your time zone and the currency you're, you're, you want for your account. Okay, awesome. Now that we've done that, we can now create our campaigns and our account is now created. First thing we wanna do, go to settings and then go to switch to expert mode. Switch to expert mode, that's what we wanna do. Now we can see all the right settings for account. Really, really, really important guys. Now, the first thing we wanna do now is we want to link our Google Ads account to our Merchant Center account. So we go to tools and settings, and then we go down to linked accounts. It's gonna open up the linked accounts panel here. And what we wanna do is we wanna go down to the Google Merchant Center tab thing here and click details. And then now uh, it says to link your Google Merchant Center account, send a request from Merchant Center. So we need to go up here and see the ID over here. I'm gonna zoom in a bit right now. So see that ID right there. It, you know, Google can generally pick up if you have the same email across both accounts. So we want to go back to Merchant Center, go to Settings, the toolbar, and go to Linked Accounts. And then we'll see the Google Ads tab there. And now you'll see that it's already shown up here with the same ID. So just like I showed you that ID before, make sure that's the same ID so you got the same account. And that's all awesome. Yep, perfectly, that's confirmed. Now, just click the button there that says Link. Now it's linked, it's gonna send the request to Google Ads. We need to go back to Google Ads here, I'm gonna refresh the page, and there we have it. There's the, the request, click view details, approve, yep, that's my website, click approve. We're now linked, our Google Merchant Center account and our Google Ads account are now linked, perfect. Okay guys, so we've linked Google Ads to Google Merchant Center, but the next really, really, really important thing to do is to set up conversion tracking with Google Analytics. Now this is so important guys because when we start getting conversions from these shopping campaigns, we're going to see them in Shopify, but we need to know what actually in your Google Ads account is causing those conversions. And not only that, but Google needs to know because for all its automated bidding strategies, Google uses all that conversion data to optimize those campaigns. So it is absolutely crucial. Do not skip this part, I repeat. Do not skip this part of the video. Let's go through this together. Let's set up our Google Analytics account link it to Google Ads, and make sure conversion tracking is set up properly. This is incredibly important, guys, and I've never met like a client that has actually set this up. It's very rare. It's maybe once I've seen a client set this up properly, so we're gonna set this up together. Let's go to Google and search for Google Analytics, and let's create our account. Go to that first result there, analytics.google.com, click that. We're gonna click Start Measuring. You're gonna put in the name of your website, for me, Key Surfers. We're gonna click, yep, Web. Make sure that's selected, go next. Put in the website name, so mine is Key Surfers. Put in your website name, don't put in Key Surfers, of course. Now we're gonna get the website URL, so jump over to your website, grab the URL, and make sure you select HTTPS. I'm gonna grab the URL and just paste it straight in there, and I'm gonna keep the www, because that's what the actual URL is, and take away those, those bits at the end and the start. Sweet, so the industry category, this doesn't matter too much, but it just gives Google a bit more information. So uh, I'm gonna put in sports for us because we're selling surfing, surfing uh, surfboards. Reporting time zone, put this uh, in your own time zone. Great, now, so we have to agree to some legal stuff. Read this for yourself. You know, I, I'm not your lawyer, so read this for yourself, but select for your own country, of course, and accept, accept. Uh, make sure you read it yourself. Once done, click create. Now it's gonna ask about email communications. I like to remove this, I don't want spam. I don't like to fill up my email inbox. But I keep the top one on just because suggestions from Google can be good. Okay guys, let's now jump back to our website and install this. Okay, we're back in our Shopify dashboard and we're gonna to go to our online store and then preferences. So going down to the settings here and then uh, we're gonna scroll down to the part that has Google Analytics. 
this is exactly where we're gonna paste our code from that analytics dashboard. So go back to analytics and see that code, copy the whole thing, make sure you get the whole thing, the Google site tag, get that, copy it, go back here, just paste it in, super easy. Once that's done, click save, save, check use enhanced e-commerce, really important for us guys, don't leave this blank, check that box, click save again, go back to Google Analytics, and next we're going to go back to the settings here, we're gonna to go to click e-commerce settings and go on, on for an, an enable e-commerce and enable enhanced e-commerce reporting. Click save, go back, awesome. Now that's enabled, we wanna make sure we can test to make sure this is 100% working. So go back to tracking info, tracking code. Here it says no data received in the past 48 hours. So we need to go back, open up our website again, refresh it, and then see if Google Analytics registers, yep, I'm on the website. So go back, sometimes you have to refresh it a few times. It may take a moment, let's go back again. Spend a bit of time on the site, go back. Boom, it says one active user on the site right now. So yes, it's working, it's firing. That's one really easy way to do, to check if your analytics tag is working. All right guys, let's now go back to Google Ads and we're gonna link Google Ads to Google Analytics. Go to Tools and Settings, go to Linked Accounts, and then once it loads, Google Analytics details, it's gonna open up this tab here. Now, our account is here from Google Analytics because we have the same email on both accounts. It says not linked, so we wanna click actions on the right hand side, click link, or oh, turn auto tagging enabled as well. Click link, turn on both of these so it pulls in the site metrics and conversion tracking. Click save, and then I also like to turn on Google Optimize, that's just for later if you have used Google Optimize. Awesome, now that that's done, that's enabled. It does take some time to pull in the data, uh, but you'll be able to get the conversion tracking set up right away. So we're gonna go back. We're gonna go up to conversions, tools and settings, conversions. Let's now set up our conversion tracking in the account, the final step here. So we're gonna click plus conversion. So let's create this conversion. We're gonna go to import on the right hand side. Now we're gonna click Google Analytics, click continue. Now it's already pulling in transactions. So we just click that. Uh, check the box, transactions, it's gonna pull in the actual transaction information, import and continue. You've imported one transaction from Google Analytics, awesome, continue. All right guys, so we have our transaction conversion there, click that transaction conversion, open that up, we got the settings. We wanna change one setting here that's really important for you guys, so in the bottom right hand corner, click edit settings. It's gonna open up the settings now, all of these are fine. Don't worry about all these top ones here. What we really care about is that bottom one, attribution model. Now, I need to explain something very important here and why we're actually changing this. So the attribution model is, this is how Google attributes a conversion across your account. Okay, so let me explain this well. So say someone sees your shopping campaign, they see one product and they click on that product, they visit your website, but they don't convert. The next day, they come back and search again, but they click a different product in your shopping campaign, click on that, go to the website, and then they convert on that product. Now, when this happens, that registers as a conversion in your account. Now, think about this. You've cl got two clicks and one conversion. How does Google attribute that conversion across those clicks? Does it say the second product had one conversion? Or do they say the first product had a conversion? Or do they say half a conversion each? This is really important because without this data, we won't know what played a role in that conversion, what, what product what keywords uh, or, or what you know what we need to bid on. So it is so important that we get this right, guys, if we're gonna manage our accounts on a profit basis based on what's actually working. And the last click model, which what is what Google sets as default, will only attribute that conversion to the last click. So it could be that second product. Even if someone actually converted on the first product but they clicked the second product, you know, and they, they had clicked both of them, it's gonna only show the last one. And you can see the problem here is that when you start running branding campaigns, which are very important, I've got a whole video on these, uh, it's gonna show the brand campaign as making the most conversions, even if someone came through the shopping campaign first. And so we're gonna think, oh, that shopping campaign isn't working because it's not getting conversions, when really it is getting conversions, but people are actually clicking a second time before they convert. And this is normal. It's a normal funnel where people click multiple times before they convert. You'll see strong brands have you know 30 to 40% of conversions happen after more than one click. So we wanna change this, so click this and go down to position-based. I prefer position-based because it attributes that conversion over multiple clicks, multiple ads, multiple keywords, whatever, whatever the data points are, and it gives the weight to the first and the last click and then spreads out the rest of the conversion data in between. Now, most of your clicks, again, most of your conversions that have more than one click are gonna be two clicks. You know, Very few times people click 
three, four, five, six. It does happen, but it's much more rare. So we want to click uh, position base, get that set up, set that in the account, um, and that's going to then split up those conversions over all the campaigns based on how people click uh, before they convert. And that's really important because now we can manage these campaigns on a profit basis. So once you've set that in, we're going to click save and then going to click done and then we're good to go. Okay, so we go back to the, the main dashboard for Google Ads and we're going to create our campaign. So you can click new campaign there or click that plus sign and then click new campaign. doesn't matter. But you'll see this window here where we can select the goal of the campaign. Some people don't like to set the goal, but I do. I like to give Google a bit more information about what we're trying to do here. So click sales. Of course, we want our shopping campaign to generate sales. Down here in the campaign type, click shopping. Super easy. Of course, it's a shopping campaign. And then it's going to pull in the Merchant Center account right there. That's fantastic. Now we need to select the country that we're selling to. So United States for this campaign. It's gonna select the standard shopping campaign. That's totally fine, that's what we want. Click continue. Now we're going to go through and change the settings. So set your name. So, you know, Google Shopping, um, all products is what I'm gonna put for this one. The bidding strategy, very important here guys. Select manual CPC with enhanced CPC. Don't start with an automated bidding strategy. Don't start with maximized clicks. Don't start with target ROAS. Google needs conversion data before it can start using these strategies. You need to start, get some traffic first. And if you start with these strategies, you can do that, but Google's gonna spend a lot more money very, very quickly. Uh, you, you're not gonna be able to control the bids. I really recommend, and this is what, and I talk about this in a lot of my videos. I have a whole video on setting up your settings, whole video on what bidding strategy to use starting off. And I have a whole video on how to manage those bids on an ongoing basis. And manual CPC is what I've used time and time again to scale up dozens and dozens of campaigns into you know five, six figure campaigns. So set it to manual CPC, the budget. Now I recommend 30 to $50 or more per day but really the budget is just going to limit how quickly you can get data. It's not going to affect the actual results unless you don't have time to manage it. So if you're, if you really want to save a lot of money, you could do $5, but it's just going to take a long time and it's going to take like a week before you can make any changes. But I'm just going to put $5 in for now. The campaign priority, a lot of other uh, PPC media buyers don't understand this, but campaign priority doesn't matter if you have just one campaign. All it does is that it prioritizes which campaign in your account for uh, the search queries for shopping. So if you have three campaigns and you're running a multi-campaign structure for shopping, yeah, that's when it matters. And then you can filter which campaign gets triggered first um, here. But so for one campaign, just put low, it doesn't matter. Uh, targeting for networks, really important here, guys. Turn these off, especially if it's your first campaign and you're new. Uh, this basically, uh, if you leave it to default, this basically says to Google, hey, you can show my ads across other partners. So that might be Yahoo, maybe Gumtree, all these other websites and search engines that Google has partnerships with. The problem there is that I have only once in my whole life of auditing accounts have ever seen an account where these performed better than Google Ads. Now, you can do it because they can still be profitable for you, but only once have I ever seen it be better, and that was also with only 100 clicks, so it wasn't very statistically significant. So I recommend here uh, turning these off because you want to concentrate all your data on the Google Shopping, especially if you have a limited budget because you just want to focus on what can really work and get you profitable as soon as possible. So turn this off. Uh, the second one here is YouTube Gmail and Discover. I have a whole video on getting your shopping ads onto YouTube. Uh, I don't recommend having it in the same campaign here as your first campaign. Let's keep it really simple, guys. Just focus on what can make it profitable. So don't, so turn this one off. So don't, don't check this box here. The next bit here is devices. That's fine. We want to show it on all devices. Locations. Okay, make sure you select your location where you're selling to, but check the location options down below. So select this uh, location options and you'll see here that it pulls out that there are all these different options. Make sure you select the second one. This is not the default one that Google sets, it's the second one. And this is so important guys because this actually makes sure that Google only shows in your location. The first option, which is default, means that Google's gonna show your ads to people that have just shown interested interest in your location. And I talk about this in all my other videos, guys, so check out my channel, and I talk about this problem all the time, uh, but I've seen on accounts that this can actually waste up to five to 10% of your ad spend on people that aren't even in the US or aren't even in Australia or wherever you're selling your products to. So check this on the second one, just so that you do show your products, your e-commerce, so you can only ship to certain areas, you know? So uh, you only wanna to ship to people's homes, and if they're in, the, in that location, that's when you, you actually wanna show these ads to them. So make sure you select that second one there, and then that's good to go. 
All right guys, so now we get this page here and we're not gonna set up showcase shopping, we're gonna set up regular shopping. So just leave the first one selected, go down to the next bit here and we're gonna enter in the ad group name. You can just put in all products because I'm gonna show you how to split these up later. And then for the bid, okay, this is important guys. Generally, I start with 50 cents to a dollar, usually about a dollar, but if you are on a really tight budget, start with say 25 cents because you can always change this later. And I have a whole video on how to manage the bids using the actual data. Uh, but if you're on a real budget, start with 25 cents and then wait, watch, watch it for one to three days. If it's not getting any impressions, so views, any impressions at all, then to start increasing your, then start increasing your bid uh, bit by bit. So get up to 50 cents, maybe 75 cents and then $1 because if you set it to say $3, well, Google's gonna spend $3, you're gonna get a lot of clicks and you're just gonna use up your whole budget. We often start with $1 um, and then we'll increase or decrease from there. Keep in mind that as well, you know, I wanna get data as quick as possible and I'm okay with spending money because I know that I can optimize it really quickly. I know what I'm doing. So for me, I don't really mind spending a little bit more at the start just because if I'm waiting three weeks to get enough data to make some good changes, then that's three weeks that I could be getting sales. So really for me, it's like a cost benefit analysis of time and profit. So yeah, so I'd recommend starting off with a uh, dollar if you can afford that. Otherwise start off with 25 cents to 50 cents around that, that, that point there and then increasing as you go. Okay, so we can just put in 50 cents just for just for this campaign here. So I'm gonna put in 50 cents and then click save. So now our campaign has been created. So you see at the top says, you cannot show ads to so start running your ads, enter your billing information, click fix it. So we need to set up our, our credit card in the account so we can start running our ads. So you're gonna put it, all your details in here. I won't go through this right now, but make sure you add your details there before you can run your shopping campaigns. All right guys, so now we're in the ad groups of our shopping campaign here. There's only one ad group, all products. Now we're gonna learn how to split out this ad group and bid on individual products. So go over to the products, click that all products name there. It's gonna open up the, the actual product group here. Click the plus sign, add subdivision. And then at the top, we're gonna to do uh, item ID, click item ID. And then we're gonna select all the products. Click continue to edit bids, click save. And now you can see that we have all the products here and we can edit each bid individually. Previously, we were just bidding 50 cents for every single product, but you'll see that as you get more data, you'll be able to change the bids based on what's actually profitable. And I have a whole video on this um, where I show you how to manage the bids on an ongoing basis. It's really, really powerful stuff, guys. And that's how you set up those campaigns, how I set things up every, you know, all the time for all, all my, my stores and clients that are all there, ready to go. One last thing I wanna show you guys is setting up columns. So on the right hand side here, click the button that says columns and then click performance here. You'll see a bunch of other columns we can add. So CTR, click through rate. We can add that to actually view extra metrics for our account, our shopping campaign. Once we start click getting data, you can click columns again. Let's go to conversions. So here we can add in the total sales, the conversion value, conversion value, the ROAS, and we can see all that data here. But once you start getting conversion data, you'll be able to see that in here, all the metrics. And I have a whole video on metrics. I'll put a link in the description on that one, but it's really important here, guys. Anyway, that's how you set up your campaigns, guys. That's everything. Um, so there, now we've set up our campaigns. That's all your shopping campaigns, guys. Brilliant. We've now set up our campaigns and our conversion tracking. What do we do now? We need to optimize and scale them. So let me give you some tips. Now, I've created a bunch of videos on my channel to help you grow and scale your shopping campaigns. The most important video you should watch right now is how to improve your product page. A lot of people stress out about their Google Ads account when they should really be paying attention to whether their product page is actually converting. This means making sure you have high quality images, a well-crafted description, and all the buy now buttons in the right places to make sure that you're really optimizing those customers. So I've just created an epic video that goes through all of this in one video. I'm going to leave a link in the description, so go check that out right now. Honestly, every single e-commerce store owner should watch this video because it's so helpful in getting more sales out of your Google Ads traffic. Like I said, link in the description. Okay, two other videos you should watch after that one is one, how to optimize your Google Shopping campaigns, and two, how to do manual bidding for those shopping campaigns. The second one on bidding management teaches you how to do the bidding for your shopping campaigns with a template that you can download and run on your own campaigns. It's a full walkthrough and method that I've used to generate over $12 million in sales for my stores and you can use it right away on your store today. It's something that I developed to scale up my shopping campaigns and no one else is teaching it and no one else is using it. So go and get that right now.
Okay guys, if you found this video helpful in setting up your Google Shopping campaigns, please go ahead and hit that like button. That tells YouTube that this was actually useful for you guys and you didn't waste your time watching this video. If you did get your shopping campaign set up, go down to the comments and let me know. Hey Sam, I got my shopping campaign set up. Thanks for the video. Otherwise, if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments too and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you wanna get more tutorials like this one and learn how to scale up your store with different strategies and techniques, please consider subscribing and check out the rest of my videos on my channel. Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.